not. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Sorry. I will. I will just some some of it. Equal to two and y equal to 
one. Okay. This is we are very rigorous. We have a stochastic process that has six states, one, two, three, four, five, six. Why is like the position? Y is the position or the state of the potential. X is the position. Okay? My motor is here, here, or you see? X is the position, whereas Y is the state of the potential. Position <coughs> of the motor. And Y is the state of the potential. Or the of course this could be also the configuration of the motor. Configuration one or configuration two. Yeah. So then just a clarification. So from two prime to zero prime, is it a jump from position two to yes. zero? Period. Yes. Yeah. So it is like a random walk. It's a random so walk. It's here is a random walk. Two prime to zero. Two prime to zero. Okay. Is it video? Is it video? Wait. <laughs> the best thing, if you if you let me give you how the rates are written in the model, because whenever you you write a Markov model, you have here the rates, so you will have. For example, this rate is omega in a in many ways. Omega two two prime, whereas this rate is omega two prime two, or this rate right to left is omega two prime zero. Zero prime. No, because I go from zero to two prime. <coughs> this arrow. The notation I will use is this one. Omega ij. Are you saying zero prime? Zero prime. Uh, yes, yes, true. This is this will be a transition rate from I to J. Okay. Sure. So, in most, I would say 90% of the papers in stochastic thermodynamics, you will see a Markov model with rates, <laughs> and then the next thing that I will tell you is what are the values of the rates. Mm -hmm. The values of the rates is where you connect to, to biochemistry. So you can say the rates, this is maybe triggered by ATP, but this is a potential, so there's an external force. You will see this in a moment. Please. Yeah. Could you explicitly write what state was in state zero in terms of exit, right? State one and zero. Okay. State two, I told you, this 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 one? Yes. Okay. State two prime would be x equal to two, but y equal to zero. Okay, and so on, so on, so on. One, you would change x prime means the potential is four. Okay. Please, if someone doesn't understand the model, please ask because all the rest is four. Okay. So that's that's the notation I follow. And then, um, then the question is, what do we put in the rates? So let me just say first, what do I do with with the switches? And in the switches, as I said yesterday, I would like that this is a motor that has a net current. So it is convenient. One good choice is that these rates are all the same. So I will take omega i i prime and omega i prime i equal all of them to r. Okay? I the same state, but I just put prime. Okay? All these are equal to r. 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 Okay, plus and plus. Then, um, what I would, I would like also is that inside this potential, so I would like to model mostly in a potential. So if, I, if this doesn't exist, I will have locally little balance. To do that, one does the following. You have uh, W, J, I. <coughs> I will put, for example, this. There are many choices to have little balance. Eh? There's more than one choice. I divided by 2 and omega j to i e minus beta pi minus dj divided by 2. Okay? You pick these numbers. Wait, wait. What's it? <laughs> if you pick, I come to your question now. If you pick these numbers, when you do the ratio, you will have minus beta pj and then divided by minus beta vj, so it will be plus beta vj. One side you have one half, the other one half. Just to say that if you take the ratio of these two, omega ij divided by omega j i, sorry, omega i to j divided by omega j to i, you will get, if you pick this number, 
if you take these functions, you will take, you will get locally the values. So locally, you will have v, v, j minus v i along the transitions that have this is j different to a. Okay. So this is my table of transitions. Okay. This is the transition rates that I choose for the model. You see, these rates <coughs> are, 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 are these ones obey locally little ones. <coughs> so it is much more likely to, to fall here than it might be given that you okay? And at this point, if you are in the off state for the potential, the potential here is zero. So the transition rate from two prime to zero prime is e to the zero, which is one, one. So these rates are all equal to one in the model. One is one is one is one, which models, if you don't have the other state, models are very useful. It's equally likely to jump right and left. So the primes, well, I, I primes are the switches, right? Switch rates. Yeah, sorry, uh, I said something wrong. Well, let me let me do one thing. I j, which I differ to j, this could each i and j, so i can be zero, one, or two. So j is 0, 1, 2. So ij, this is 0, 1, 2. These are distances. In reality, this is also valid for here, because the potential is 0. But I could also write it like this, that omega i prime j prime with i different to j is equal to omega j prime j prime, which is equal to 1. This is the same as saying the potential is 0. These are the primes. So this specifies all the rates in my problem. Now you can come back to this. Um, here, what you wrote that x is equal to 2, uh, when there are uh, two circle notations, we think it's identical to 2 now. Two circle. <coughs> when you have a circle, this is standard notation for a state in a matrix. You will always write it in circles. So if you have two state models, you will have state one and state two, and you will write like this, omega plus, omega minus. Okay? Circle means state. You can call this uh, alpha, beta, and you want. It's standard notation. Here? Yeah. Okay, the potential is to be, but what I'm saying here, what is the state of the potential? The potential can be switched on or off, as I said here. Okay, this is the state of the potential, on or off. My variable one has two values, zero or one, or minus one, one, as you want to call it. Here I call it zero or one. This is why y equal to zero is the state of, and y equal to one is the state of. Okay? So this is a very good question. Here I just say the state. This is the information from the, from, from the state, my state. <coughs> Another thing is what is the potential. And the potential enters through the rates. Okay. So, so basically in this line, up, there is there is the balance. Local. This line there is the balance. Local. Switch. This Break the balance. This exactly. This is enough to, to generate more. Enough. Okay, so remember, maybe if I want to complement what you say, is that the potentials here have up, so V0 is equal to 0, V1 is equal to V, and V2 is equal to V. You want to even be more precise, okay? So this is a bit ideal. And here we have broken intervals. This is what I explained yesterday. And it's interesting because when you see, when you take these two, so you get for the prime states, Prime prime, omega, j prime, j prime. This, I want that this is a short comment. Eh? R over R is equal to 1. You could also think about this as a transition with little balance. So you could have this is equal to E minus beta something, but this beta should be 0 to be equal to 1. <coughs> so that's equivalent to have a, a thermal bath with infinite temperature. Okay, beta 0 would be infinite temperature. So one interpretation of of this broken interbalance is to have an, in, a, 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 an environment with even temperature, which is what Lucapelliti explained as a world reservoir. Okay. This is just a 
saying in reality we have broken interval balance. We have broken the balance in, the, in these transitions. In, in all these transitions, as I explained yesterday. This is my model. It's not mine, but it's uh, definitely it's in, in our paper. Uh, and it's a simple simplification of <coughs> what we um, what I introduced yesterday about classic transits in continuous space and time. So the key question that I will ask here of this lecture will be what happens if you don't see the state? So if you don't see that the, the potential is in on or off state. What happens if you only see a trajectory in the x axis? This is a big challenge, and I'll try to give some answers and what can we do with this. So for this, um, I will remind you uh, some results that we will use quite a lot. I will be interested in computing the entropy production rate. So remember, I think Abhishek and Arna were talking about this entropy production, which is a, a fluctuating quantity understood as Hoffman constant, which most of the times I will take equal to one, log of the path probability. Let me write it x, uh, x0 up to xt. Divided by the path probability of the time reversal trajectory, x0 x0, as a function of t of the length of the trajectory. They explain that both Abhishek and Arnam that this is a fluctuating process as, as a positive drift, and with up, <coughs> average is always positive. The average is the Kullback Nyberg dependence. Okay. Today I will focus on the rate of this process, which is what is the average growth per unit time of the entry production. We will assume we are in a stationary state. So a stationary state in this context means the rates are held fixed, uh, given by this number all the time, and we will have a steady time. Okay. These are my main assumptions. So the, the key result from stochastic thermodynamics to understand the, okay, I will be interested in this type of, of um, quantity, which is the entry production per unit time, which I call S dot <coughs> dot. Okay. This and you say that state means this are like this form, always. The rates are always like this, fixed. So you, you have a, an autonomous so machine. So the, the, the rates are, are given, and you look at the fluctuations of, of a system that is initially in the you know, initial distribution, then it will relax to a stationary distribution. Steady state. There will be steady state in the sense that <coughs> you can think of this as a process that has periodic boundary conditions. You have six states, and then the sixth state is the first one, so you have the current that appears. It's like if you have a screen and you watch a particle crossing the screen. The particle is driven, but then at some point it will come back here. Okay? This is somehow the mapping and how we understand the stationary states. So, 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 yeah. yes. so now you have a process that is in and then you, you actually you end up, if the optical trap is cancelled, let's say, then you actually uh, Then you will have, you, you will be changing the rates. Uh, you, we have changing the rates, right? Yeah, because you change the potential, and you change the, the local interval. Yeah, we don't say that. It's fixed. It's fixed. Okay. Uh, so I, I have a question because you said that you will try to infer about the process by looking at the trajectory. Yeah. Let me uh, so give me my we will sample the, uh, give me five minutes, otherwise uh, I don't, I don't reach that point, you will not understand me without what I'm going to say now. Okay, so when you have this process, you know, remember, if I want to know the, the average of many of these entropy productions at a given time, you average with the pro path probability of the process itself, which is this one. So remember, if I want, actually, if I start at time t, I don't know how to write, write maybe like this, this will be, a probability, okay, this is the integral of the first possible trajectory. But actually, maybe we are in discrete, so I don't need to do a path in the sense. So if the sum over all possible trajectories, all possible trajectories here t of the probability of the trajectory times the quantity. I will put KB to one 
because it's convenient. If not, I will write KB 1,000 times in the lecture, OK? Remember, this is the trajectory. It's time trajectory. I put a, um, an interval. I call this x0 t, because it will save me a lot of time. This is Sometimes I will write it in a different way. See? x t0, so this is the reversal. Okay. Time reverse. Or I can call it also x0 t with a tilde. Sometimes it's useful. So you see p log p divided by another uh, distribution of trajectories. So this is often called curva Kleiler lever in the D KL of P X uh, T with respect to B X T Z. Okay, this is my key object that I will discuss in detail today. That you have to remind one thing that this DKL is a sort of a distance. Not a distance in the sense that it's symmetric when you change the argument, but it's always a positive number. You can prove this is always greater or equal than zero. And it is a measure of how distinguishable are two distributions. Okay, so it's like a distance between distributions. So in essence, this is a measure of the arrow of time. Because you have the probability to see a process forward or a trajectory of the motor in one direction with respect to the probability of seeing the trajectory backwards. So in essence, this is a, a, a quantitative measurement of the arrow of time, which we relate to entropy production. Okay. So um, now what I'm going to do is I will simplify things even more, because uh, okay. first this is the total entropy in average. Then typically we are interested in, in the rate of change. So how much? What is the slope of this curve? How much ATP you consume per unit time? So that quantity is called entropy production rate. And it's defined as, uh, as follows. The limit when t goes to infinity of 1 over t times this curva time. OK? Dkl b epsilon t t x t less So it's the rate of growth. This quantity grows roughly linearly in time. This is the average entropy. So we would like to know how much entropy is produced per unit time. So you look at an infinite trajectory, and you divide it by, by the start. Tilde is for the backward, right? Yeah, tilde. So it shouldn't be T0 instead of 0 t. Yeah, OK. This is a notation. This, this notation means exactly what I write here, xt to x0. So seeing the trajectory reverse. In literature, you will find also Theta, so I use a lot of theta, for example, here, because it's the time reversal operation. Uh, you will see xt0, you will see like this. There are 1,000 notations. Okay. At this moment, depending on the day, I will write one. Or <laughs> but you just have to understand okay, what, you, what you mean when you write something. Please. Yeah. This will come. This will come. Okay, yeah, it will appear. Snackenberg will appear when I write this from the specific dynamics. It will appear. Sir, uh, sir, in this case, why is the, uh, why is the distribution of, uh, why is the distribution of, uh, like, the, like, the backward path also the same? No, it, it doesn't need to be same. If this is fluctuating, <coughs> it means these are typically different. Okay, but like, I don't even think the same P. That is P, X, T, or 2, X, T. And this bx t to x0. So this p is can be Of course, if there is irreversibility, they are different. If it's non-equilibrium, you go more one way than another. So if you have a flow, and you have a particle in a flow with fluctuations, most of the times it will go like this. But sometimes it will do backward motion. It will be very unlikely this with respect to this. Very unlikely. If there is a So p. I don't know, let's say this is x1 and this is x2, p of seeing x1 and then x2 is different to seeing first x2 and then x1. This is if you are out of equilibrium. If you are in equilibrium, it's equally like. Okay. So, 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 why is the solution is like this case? Sorry? Like 
Sorry, I don't. This can you speak louder? This is stuff. Huh? Oh, you're saying why not drop the production? We are taking one by three, right? Okay, this is a very advanced question. <laughs> DDT is more, more problematic in continuous time. This is much simpler to understand. But, but why, limit, why limit t going to infinity? Huh? Why limit? Because I want to understand the rate, the average rate of growth, so like the power. <coughs> when you have a machine in a stationary state and you would like to, to compute the power, the power it's typically understood as the work over a long time divided by the time. So how the work increases with with time. So it's like the slope of the work. So, so, so we are not interested in fluctuations. That's what you want. No, no. In, in biology, there of course there's no fluctuations. No, no. I mean fluctuations of the entropy production. Basically. In this lecture, I will not discuss fluctuations. So that's why you take on this last time. Yeah, I'm interested, as I said, uh, to, to the average the average rate of growth which will be related to how much ATP the machine is uh, spending per unit time. Okay? So there is an implicit assumption that uh, this quantity, the DK, is going linear. Yes, yes. But which for most systems? Most systems, it does. <laughs> In equilibrium, it's equal to zero, so it doesn't go linear in time. But uh, you can pick any of the models that Abhishek and uh, Arnold myself explained you will get a linear. It's quite hard to find a model. I, I'm not aware of a model that is not linear. I think I don't see anything. This, you know, this is t times the large deviation function. Right? Yeah. So essentially what you're getting is the large deviation function. No, no, I'm not getting that. Is, that is part of the deviations from. Oh. Because really like that s was t times the h. Of no, 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 no. D. He wrote that the long time is e to the minus t something. Uh, e to the power of the world. E to the power of the It's just a slope. It's as simple as, as the slope, the rate of growth of this process. Because if you have a machine in a steady state, it will be continuously consuming energy. And if you let it go and go and go and go, if you look at an infinite time, the amount of this space will be infinite in a steady state by the means. It's just the rate of growth. There's nothing like that. the velocity of the other if you want. Okay? In, okay, if you have isothermal system, this will depend on your condition, but if you have an isothermal system, this will be W dot divided by the temperature. So you can identify then physical properties. Most of the cases we will be here. If you had, this is not the case here, if you had more than one thermal bar, this would be this quantity, Q dot H divided by TH minus Q dot C divided by DC. Okay? This is in stationary heat engines. I'm not talking about this today. Okay. But what I can show is that this is going to happen here. So the the entropy production is going to be the dissip dissipated power in the environment. Okay. It will come later if we have time. OK, so I think the concept is more or less clear. But I'm going to simplify things even more because I will be interested in the following. So I have a trajectory. As I said, in the beginning, I assume continuous time. So what I will have initially is a trajectory, which is, for example, in state 0, there's 1, there is 2, there is 0 prime, 1 prime, 2 prime. And I will have, OK, I'm in 0, then I go to state, uh, most likely, I go to 0 prime, and then to 0 prime, I go to 1 prime, etc. Okay. But this would be the full information of a single trajectory. I have six states. And in principle, one has, as Abhishek explained in the course, one has states, one has jumps, and one has also dwells. You have jumps between states and also waiting times. Today, I will simplify this at the maximum I can, which is I will only I say that I will only see jumps, and I will only record the different states visited by, by the uh, So this is the simplest information, more or less, you can get from a state, from a, a Markov process, which will be, I am in state 0, and the first element, okay, so t equals 1, 0, is, is uh, 0. 
in the next time. So this time will be the step, okay? Units of steps or jumps. The next jump, I go to zero prime. Zero prime. So if you went from here to here, and so on, okay? So I will record only the jumps. Okay? <laughs> so typically, I would call this thing. This is trajectory, trajectory containing containing uh, uh, jumps. So this is actually in discrete time. It's discrete time because the number of jumps is discrete. So after the first jump, n is one, n equal to n equal to. Okay. After the fourth jump, so very very simple. So they will not be the dwells. So I will ignore the dwell times for simplicity. So. An interesting relation is that if you want to know the energy production rate per unit time, you can do an approximation in which, in which, uh, one second, you can do an approximation which is quite good, which it works in, in many systems, which is the following, which I lost in, in, my, uh, in my calculation, just give me a second, which is that the energy production per unit time is actually roughly equal to what we call k times sigma t. And let me now just tell you in words what are these two things. Sigma dot, I will use in my lecture, is the entry production per step. Okay? The entry production associated to this trajectory. Steps. And k is something that relates something per step to something per unit time. Okay. Can you explain this again? The second figure means I am step zero. I am waiting time, waiting time, waiting time. And then you make a hop. Then I just hop. And I step zero prime. And then I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait. And then I jump. Okay, this is the full information. But as for now, I'm going to say, let me just record the hops. So I hop from zero to zero prime. So before I was in zero, now I go to zero prime. The next step, in the next hop, will be one prime. So I will keep, take from here one prime, okay? And so on. Okay. So I'm taking a very simple case in which I just record the box. Okay? <coughs> I just record the box. So very, very simple. Okay. I could have an experiment where I have discrete time. This would be a different situation if I have discrete time experimentalist, then I will record, more, in most cases, I will record dwells. This is hope to know where you stay. What I'm going to show today is... Next we will record the positions. Yeah. Precisely the positions. Yeah. yeah. Some of the As for now, yeah. let, me, let me start with a simple case. I record everything, position and state. So I, I have access to what I call full information. So I can see the six steps. <coughs> let me start simple. Then I, I, I make life a bit harder by saying I don't see one of the variables. By now I see everything. So I have full information. Okay. So if you do this, okay, one of the things is now I will focus on this, which is the enter reproduction. Enter reproduction per step. Per step or per data. Per each data that I record. This is the enter reproduction per unit time. And it's very simple to show that you can relate both by a simple quantity, which is called traffic, usually, which is the number of steps per unit time. It's the average number of jumps, jumps of steps per unit time. But, okay, this is a simple argument. <coughs> Let me just focus today on this quantity, which will be the entry production per data in this trajectory. And the, what one can show, and it's a very beautiful result, is that um, the sigma dot is, is greater or equal than what we call, um, okay, there are many ways of calling this. In, in the paper, we call it D, it has, it has a uh, small d, which is the limit when n goes to infinity of, it's an equivalent calculation of this. 
of Vn over n. It's, I will now introduce what is this Vn. Vn is the irreversibility of the strings of length n. So it will be, I will write now the definition of Vn is the following. The sum x1, sum, okay, there are f, sums of many of these, is n of now this is the key object that I will talk to. B x1 x2 up to xn logarithm B x1 x2 xn divided by B xn up to x2 x1. Okay. So so you can get into that. Yeah. So in your full model, there are some all transitions are not possible. For example, two prime, I cannot go to zero, right? Sure. So is that taken care of in this? Sure. 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 It will appear here because that transition will have zero probability, so we will not count this sum. So your diagram also certain slopes are not possible. Yes, yeah, certain are not possible. Yeah. This is a sketch, okay? This is yeah. not very rigorous. Yeah. Not very rigorous. Okay. So look at this quantity. This quantity here. It's what I call d small n. And this is the irreversibility. Be careful, many people call this entropy products. And this lecture that I'm giving you today to convince you, you cannot call this entropy products. Okay. This is called the irreversibility. Of strings of length of n. Okay. Maybe n strings to tell that there are n of them is not the case. There are not n of them, there are many. These are the strings of data that have length n. That have, this is 1, 2, up to n. So you look at words that have n letters. Okay. So I got, what is that sigma total data or equal to b? I will count it. This is the most important question. This. <laughs> Very important question is first, what is this? Okay, this is the probability to see a trajectory in this of, of, of uh, steps. Okay, x1, x2, xn. So this could be probability of, for example, 0, 1, 2. Okay, one example of this would be the probability to see 0, 1. Means I first see 0, then I, then I see 1. And then I see two. Okay? This could be this, because I'm summing over all possibilities of the x axis. And here is the same thing. If you put n equal 3, it could be b, 0, 1, 2. But here in the denominator, this will, please, if you read the formula, is the reverse. Here is b, 2, 1, 0. Okay? This is the probability of seeing the reverse. Like I was saying here. Is that exactly the same as the top here? Top line? Is it different? Okay. Here. Here is the same as the continuous time. No, that DKL. Yeah, yeah. Like this is a DKL. Exactly. It's exactly the same. It is, it is a DKL of words of length n. It is a DKL. Exactly. But it is not exactly the same uh, in time, but it is at the transition. Yeah. This is a DKL. Exactly. DKL of B. X1 to Xn. With B, Xn, B. But it is not identical to what is written above. Why? No, the one above, are they identical? Yeah, because it's P of X0, T, P, X0, T, and it's P of X reverse, X, T0. The same. So same, right? Same, but in the script. Okay. So this, 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 this is in continuous time, this is in discrete time. Exactly. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. There's not, nothing new to it. Then why, why you call it small entry production? Because what is exact? It's really the, the key question. So, <clears throat> what I'm saying here is that there is an inequality. Here on the left is the real entry production. It's, it's the heat. For example, uh, if you are in an isothermal environment, this would be minus Q dot divided by T. Okay? In, in an isothermal environment, you can have other things. This is the physics. physics. Okay. And 
electronic production per KB, okay? This is a physical one. Here, I have nothing. I don't know anything else. I don't, I don't put a force, I don't put anything. You can analyze this without knowing this. But, but, what I didn't tell you is what is x. So, so even if I have a tip, I can calculate. Wait. What if xi, okay? xi will be the value of the process at i. What if xi is equal to either 0, 1, 2, or 0 prime, 1 prime, 2 prime? This means I see all the states. So each of these symbols, so in each of these sums, I sum it over these six possible values. This is, in, in our problem, this is having full information. So we, we know everything of the microstate of this. If we have this, here we have an equality. But what if now my x is not like this, but I have a coarse grain information? What if now I'm blind to the y? I'm looking at the system from here, and I don't, I don't see the y. So these two states become the same state, these two states become the same state, and these two states become the same state. Then we call it alpha, beta, and gamma. You do that, you can again say, OK, I have no idea about physics, but uh, I am a very good statistician. I can compute this. I generate trajectories and go. So this thing, this, is, this will be the take-home message of my lecture. This thing will not be equal to sigma, but will be smaller. So Cold screening reduces the curve. Cold screening reduces the curve angle. I mean, if you're saying that my n is maximum 6, because you have 6 speeds. This is the count. This is a very good question. Because in this sum, you the, the rate, depending on the nature of this casting process, this sum will saturate at finite end. And I, what I will show now is that if, if the dynamic is Markovian, it is enough to stop at n equal to. If it's not Markovian, things are more complicated. But you will see it now. Of course, of course this, this is the ideal thing. The ideal thing is I have an infinite length. And I can do but in practice this is impossible to do. Theoretically, this can be proved. This is getting more than this. Now we will come to practice and, and, and how things can be done in a real experiment. <coughs> uh, I last one. Okay. But so this x1, x2. Let's make a rule for faculty on these questions. So for this x1, x2, x n, this is not the sequence of jumps that it is taking in discrete time. Repeat a bit. This, x, this probability p of x1, x2, whatever, dot, 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 xn, this is not the sequence of jumps that your process is taking in discrete time. What is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then why is it bounded by 6? I mean, it is not. Because it could go no, x1, x2. Not xi, the state. Not 6. xi. So, so I'm summing over all possible paths here. So I, have, I, I need to know the alphabet or, or the, the domain of each of these xi. If I see all the all the process, I see all the states, each x each symbol can take six different values. If I have a process like this, well, the probability of seeing a trajectory, so it has only two values. So in this sum, I will sum zero and one. If you have a model with one thousand states, you will have to do this sum over one thousand states. It depends on, on your specific model that you look at. Directly. Okay. Okay, so I think we understand each other. It's important. As I said, your question uh, about the, the course training is very important because to show this, you you invoke uh, the so-called chain rule of the curve glider. <coughs> chain rule for the k divergence, which tells you that if you reduce information, it's harder to distinguish between two distributions. This is in Thomas Cover book, Information Theory. You can show that, for example, you have two variables, x1 and x2, and two distributions which could be even not related to the time reversal, p x, x1, x2, and then q x1, x2, 
and you reduce information, so I ignore the variable x2, the two distributions are, are harder to distinguish. So you get something like this. D of px is a very general statement. px1, q, x1. So reducing information is detrimental to distinguish. So this, this is true, and, and this is true for any cost grain. So if you cost grain, if you reduce information of your system, uh, this quantity is, it gets reduced. That's why you get this lower bounds. Okay? If I have full information, it's equal, and whatever I do, it will reduce my full climate. So then I will get a lower bound. <laughs> and all these inequalities uh, in, the, in the field were developed using tools for information theory. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. OK. So now, what I'll try to do, let's see how far I can go, is, um, is to show what, how, what do we do with this quantity? How to make this put it at work? Okay. So it will strongly depend on the nature of this sequence, x1, x1, on the nature of the stochastic process that we observe. And the simplest case is, of course, when, when it's IID, there's nothing to say. If it's an IID process, this is equal to zero. Okay, if you take numbers from a lottery, it, it is totally reversed. But uh, the next step would be Markovian. So if, what, what if my dynamics is now Markov? Keep this in mind. <laughs> so it, uh, what if the dynamics is Markov? So if the dynamics is Markovian, uh, surprisingly, not so surprisingly, once you do the math, you don't need that much information. You don't need to collect strings that are infinitely long. So when I have full information in this, in the model that just disappears. So, so this is also Markovian. The process that I explained, so the, the, the process, the process, okay. Sorry, this is the potential, like this, and then this, and then there are six states. This process, okay. The dynamics, I said, is Markovian, because I, I said there are rates and there's a master equation. Yeah. It's Markovian when you see the six states, oh. but when you cross grade, it's not Markovian. If I group these states into one, it's not Markovian. So now, let's say I have full information. Okay? Full information. So my xi is 0, 1, 2, or 0 prime, 1 prime, 2 prime. In this case, the dynamics is Markovic. So x trajectories, x0 d, one, two, ten, it's a Markovian process. Which means that in order to know the, the where do you go the next step? You only need to know your current state. Okay, this is a <coughs> diagram that will come later. So you have x1 determines, okay, if you know x1, there's a probability to jump to x2. And once you jump to x2, there's a probability to jump to x3, and you forget about the past. So if you remember the Markovian, okay. Do you all know what is a Markov process? Yes? yes. Who likes to be there? Okay, good. That's good. Okay. If you know it's a Markov process, we can speed up a little bit. And now, uh, what we can do... You mentioned that this is zero for IIDs, right? Yeah. IID means reversible case. Yeah. Okay. So let me compute this D for a Markov process. D. This would be... Okay, that is going to be Just in case. Limit when n goes to infinity, 1 over n. And now, um, what I'll do first is, uh, yeah, to use the one property. So this will be the sum, x1, 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 And then, uh, now, it's the log of this thing. We very long. p of x1, p of x2, even x1. Dot, 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 e, xn, given xn minus 1. Okay? So, Markov property. 
Yeah, simple. And now I do the time reverse, so I just change the arguments. <coughs> I start from xn, then um, xn minus 1, xn, and the last thing that I see is x1 from xn. <coughs> right? I, I just use the definition of mine first. So, for example, a AOUR uh, is this exponential exponential exponential. So typically what we see that if I have a time axis and then I pose uh, with <coughs> then we have this non macrobia in the non post grain level and macrobia in the in the post grain. Yes. So opposite that you are opposite? Uh, uh, like let's say for example you have the power as an exponentially correlated noise, so we have some time scale down. And then you you have you so for example like I have a uh -huh. uh, process now. Uh, after if I see after that correlation time tau, uh -huh. then these two things are okay. like they, they are not depending on each other, right? But okay. if we are going within that correlation time, that within uh -huh. tau I see, then they are exponentially correlated. That means non normal thing. As is the opposite in that case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that case, some of the phenomenology will be different here. Maybe because graining gives you more information. So it depends on the how you post grain, like whether it is processed. It, it could be, but anyway, this bound is always true. So when you have the full trajectory, the maximum entry production, you can get it when you have full information. Yes. I've heard of some examples that post graining can, can have a normal autonomous behavior on, on the irreversibility on this object. On this object. But not, never higher than the entry production. There are some post graining procedures that Maybe if instead of three variables you have two, maybe with two you see more irreversibility. Mm -hmm. But you will not see more than the No, that is true. But the process is from Markovian to non Markovian or the non Markovian to Markovian. Let me just discuss oh, yeah, sure. the process of I think there are examples where. Yes, yes. Let me, let me try to go to the basic, otherwise. Yeah. Okay. So, now, here. Um, what you realize is that this is a very particular structure. The log of a product is the sum of the logs. So you can now group these terms, the conditional probabilities, you can group this with these ones. Then x3, x2 with the repairs, and so on and so on, until this one that you group it with this one. <coughs> so the important thing is that there are n minus 1 of these terms that are all the same, plus this term. First term actually is equal to zero. B x one for xn log b x one divided by b xn. Okay, the first term plus now it comes a limit n of infinity of n minus one times the same thing divided by n of some x one over x two b x one. Of x2 of b x2 from x1 b x1 from right so I have grouped n minus one of these in the same term same thing. And now okay one case is x1 x2, the other one is x3 x4, etc. But I am in a stationary state. So it doesn't matter, all of them are, are the same. Okay. And summing over all possibilities. And then I have this term. This term is very easy to show that it's equal to zero. Because you marginalize, so first you take px1 to xn log of px1, you marginalize all of them, and you will get px1 log px1. The other one will be with a minus. Please. Yes? Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. But, but, okay. You don't need that you have P, X1, X2, XN, log. Let me, let me take the first case, okay? Log P, X1. Let me calculate this. So if you calculate this, here, this is a joint density, you will marginalize. So here, there's nothing on PX1. So this is equal to just this, the marginal, P is 1, 
from this. Okay. Do you get this? This is possible that is one is okay, they follow a markov process, but this is a joint density of n random variables. And this is there is a thing here, an object that does not depend on x2, x3, x n. So when you sum over all of them, you can marginalize and this becomes sum of p x1, only x1, log of px1. Okay? The other one with PXM is the same, but the other one would be with a minus. The other one would be minus sum of XM, PXM, log PXM. And these two are the same if I am the statesman state. So this is how the, I mean, not exactly this, but this system entropy of the it's a system entropy, isn't it? But in a stationary state, the system entropy is conserved in that. So this is minus h. This, this is it. This is what I want to say. This becomes equal to zero. Zero. And then there are these terms, and you see, I'm scaling this n divided by n when n goes to infinity. So this goes to 1. And moreover, here I can marginalize. There is x1, x2, but I have marginalized already. <laughs> so that's it. So the limit when it goes to infinity of this is just this quantity, which is some x1, comma, x2, p, x1, comma, x2, log of p, x2, given x1, divided by p, x1, from x2. Okay? Very, very simple. So you see in a Markov process, all this calculation for infinitely long strength becomes a very simple thing. You just need to record jumps. This is the probability that in a time k, okay, this is the probability of seeing this jump. And you have to take also the probability to see the target of the jump. That's it. The probability is of jumps. Mark a process, things become simple, and this is actually, and um, I call this D2, to emphasize that we need only data of two, two states, so my current state and my, and my next state. This is totally consistent with what is a mark of process. So this means that the, this is, this is the boundary terms, as, as you tell, enters to infinity, they drop. Yeah. That is what you're asking. No, not, not only the drop, this is equal to zero. This is equal to zero. Equal to zero. Because I'm in a stationary state. Ah. Not only drop. So these are not, not like limitingly going to zero, but exactly zero. It's exactly zero. So I have this thing, which I call D2, and I can write it in a convenient way, like this. D2 minus D1. Where this D, big D, is what I introduced here. Is the Kolbach Leiber of words of length n? Remember, okay, it's a bit obvious that, well, I told you, the one is zero. This is what I, I, I expect here. This is equal to zero. So, okay, yes, I can put whatever quantity here that is zero. <laughs> okay. But it is convenient because it's also important to realize that this is a joint density, probability that I am in one and in the next step I will be in two, but these are conditional densities. Given that I was a one, I will go to two. Okay? That's why it has this structure, because in the end it's based here. Okay. So so which means that in a steady state you just have to record as it is, but always do it one by one. One by one. And then you this the If Markovian. If Markovian. If the process is Markovian, okay, you may you may be very ambitious, I would like to look into the trajectory, but you don't need if it's Markovian, you don't need to. This is what I want to say. Plus, uh, okay, you see something interesting because here it comes a bit the ratio of the transition rates. So this will be related to, to the potential. Just one quick uh, question. So is the reverse also true? That if you find, uh, if you have some unknown directly. The reverse? The reverse of this is also true. Right? You have some unknown data. And you process and you find that you process the whole data or only two. Uh -huh. You get the same answer, then the process is not 
Yeah, yeah. This will come in a few minutes. In a few minutes. In a few minutes. <coughs> okay, one thing is this is multi tool, you can calculate for the model that I explained, and it's very easy to to um, convince yourself convince yourself of the following. First, the condition of, for the ratchet. Ah, I don't have space. Okay. For the ratchet. The conditional density is uh, x2 given x1. You can show. Okay, uh, it's a trick for students. When you have rates, how do you, com how do you compute transition probabilities? This is what I teach to my, my students in test. The thing you do is you take the rate omega x2 from x1 and you divide by the escape rate. So you have to sum with all possible destinations from state x1. x1, x2, sum over all x2s. Okay. Given the rates, you can take the rates I gave you before in the model, you can construct the, the conditional probabilities. So you can do this. Okay. Typically, this is the approach in stochastic thermodynamics to biology. We, we develop things that are a bit, seem very mathematical, but then we apply to specific rates and they give us some answers to biology. There are more formulas here than, than figures, but anyway. So if you, if you plug in here, uh, the range of the plastic ratchet, the range of the plastic ratchet, uh, what you get from this calculation, it's very, very simple to show that um, <coughs> the result that you get from the plastic ratchet is D2 equals, <coughs> this is for the plastic ratchet, okay? D2 equals beta, and then you get the sum for i, comma j, sum star, which I will explain now, vj minus vi. So what is the sum star? The sum star is the sum over ij and i prime j prime. So this is a sum that you do over states, okay. over these states, and over these states. Okay. Sorry, I, so this uh, rate I understand this P x2 given x1. After that, what do you I just missed it. What is D2? D2 is defined here. This is D2. Oh, okay, this one. Okay, okay, okay. okay. irreversibility for works of length 2. If you plug in here the conditional probabilities for the model, biological model that we use, mm -hmm. you get this equation where this sum starts is the sum over states within each potential. So from the experiment, we are getting the rates, right? That, that omega. Yeah. You, let's say you do a biological experiment, and you fit this to some functions of chemical potentials, forces, lengths of the, of the step, etc. You get that, those that appear in the, omega in the rates. And then I, from there, I construct P. You construct P. Okay, that's one approach, if, if the data is not coming. Then you plug in this formula, and all of a sudden what you get is beta times the energy change. Okay, so you can show it in the, the model I said, okay, in that sum star, you don't sum these transitions, okay? These transitions are excluded from this sum star. It's all very, very simple, very simple. And this is the dissipation in the end. You can show that this, um, this is the dissipation per step. Okay. I don't know. Okay, divide by the temperature. It's really, when you have full information, you capture the um, reflux. So the conditions are excluded. How is. Uh, how come? How come? Because. When you so because VJ and V are the same for the for those periods. So, so those will go out. Like, any no, no, no. This, this, the sum star sums over these ones and this ones, yeah. not over this. Correct. So the ones at the bottom will go away because vi is same as vi prime is same as vj prime. This will go yeah. away. So actually only this one will come. But why are the transitions not at all present? <laughs> this is exercise homework. Ah. Just calculate the <laughs> calculate the the, the formula backward <coughs> conditional probabilities. And then the same. I see. So. And then it comes. That's, that's the main but, uh, but even if the retail balance is broken? Or even if the retail balance is broken, 
even if the last is broken. Here, okay, here there's some stuff, so it's some over continuous states in this case. Even if the one is broken, this quantity gives me information about entry reproduction. This is a very important lesson. No, that is that I agree. I agree in the sense that okay, that I like, listen, but uh, that it cancels out for the transitions, even if the return balance is broken. Yeah, 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 yeah it does. In this example, in other examples, it's, it's more <coughs> stress. You also see that <coughs> what you get is the energy difference in that state. If this is the heat dissipated, so you come here and you fall. So if you if you have a current, you will have a net dissipation of heat. It will be in, someone is adding energy, but then it dissipated to the heat. So somehow this quantity that I'm getting there. So is the, is the energy difference. So this energy that is released to the heat. So we are computing the heat dissipation. <coughs> so all, all these statistics at the end is related to the physical quantities. When you have full information, okay? Because here we, I'm saying the dynamics is Markovian and I have all the states. So you are saying if dynamics is Markovian, then force planning has no effect. Yes, it will have effect. It is mechanical. By now I see all the states, my dynamics is Markovian, and I do this computation. So if I go to the general result. General result is this. Something like that. So you are saying if I post plane, then there will be less dissipation, or I will not have information of that information? Yes. Dissipation will be there, but I will not know. I will not get the information. This will come in the end part of the lecture. You will see it now. You will see it now. Sorry? What have you written after? Delta W divided by temperature. So it's the work in a step divided by temperature. So the dissipation. It could be also minus delta Q divided by the heat dissipation. So, I mean, here if I knew that weight, Function of all this probability. Even though if I do after coarse graining, I will not able to calculate this condition weight. That's why I'm Basically, I am having a suppose I am having a Markovian feature. Ah. A coarse grain, I will lose the. I mean, this yeah. will not become a normal. No, no, so I'm trying to explain that. I would like to reach that point in my lecture, but you're asking me. All of it the same question. <laughs> but this is like one to measurement <laughs> Okay, how much, how much time do we have? Uh, half an hour. Half an Okay, okay, so my answer to you, this is answer to you, answer to you. This is what I, to you, this is what I try to explain in 10 minutes. Or <laughs> 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 Okay, delta W is the work, uh, it's not the I could call it down. It's the work uh, exerted in a step. Okay. And the work per step. So energy will not be the energy there will not be in So actually what is happening, and to do a fully uncover the problem, is that we are in steady state. In steady state, Delta, so the energy is not increasing in time. So you have the first law, you can, you can write it like this. A few dot, a W dot, equal to zero, a long times. So either you will get Q minus Q dot or plus W dot, okay? And the way you are dissipating is the following, that you are here, and all of a sudden, someone leaks the energy of the particle. So you come, all of a sudden, this energy work done in the system. Then you will say, okay, maybe I received the same work back. This is not true because you have this potential that typically will make the particle climb down. So then you will switch. Okay, this is a typical trajectory. It doesn't mean all of them will be same. Then you will receive back energy, but less energy because the particle has dissipated, has, has fallen the potential. So if you do the average of the work done, you only the very important thing is you only do work in the switches. On the rest, you are in a given potential. Okay. So there are two ways. You can either think about heat, so this will be also minus delta Q divided by T, or 
blasted. <laughs> Delta W because of the first law, so they change time. Q is minus W in steady state. Okay? But typically it would be this. You input energy, then the particle falls in the potential, and then you receive energy, but less than what you put. So that is what this is. <coughs> There's a lot of work that you put that is lost. And this is it. This, this will be not zero. Now. What is that temperature? The temperature of the bath. There is a thermal bath. In the model, I put a beta. Okay? So the transitions are triggered by a thermal bath. In all the rates that I put at the beginning, there was a beta. Okay? In the exponential. So this beta is the temperature of the environment. Because in biology, we cannot forget that there is a temperature. It's not, we are not doing things in bath. Please. You can tell only yes Sure. So last question, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we continue like, in the next one. Like the effective tension <laughs> yes. and the particle inception, if there's some kind of like similar one. Yeah, can you repeat the first part? Like in the previous lecture, you told me that the ah. this is V1, V2, ah. and there this is V1. Like yeah. We this particle. Yep. So, so the same formula, is it? like considering only V effective potential ah. and the particle and... Yeah, with V effective, it will be a tilted potential. Yeah. So now the potential will be like this, falling, okay? You could do the same, but breaking with the bar, so you will have, okay, you see, this, this point is not the same as this. Yeah. You will get the same, you will get the same. But you will get exactly the same result, exactly. <coughs> if, if your effective model is correct, I said this is a, this is a way of, of building a thermodynamically consistent effective model. If you do an effective model that doesn't get the right dissipation, you have to work. Okay, let me go to normal coherence because this is really the, the, the thing that you okay, There was something else about statistics and experiments, but I try my best. Okay, so really try my best. Okay, so um, I think. <coughs> the next thing will be what if you do cross graining, in particular what if your process is not Markovian. So most likely when you cross grain, you have no Markovian dynamics. Most likely. So you would like to know how this quantity is small d, reversibility. It's really giving me about the very production and how does it work. So, um, in order to do this, what you can do, is, uh, first uh, simple exercise to consider a second order Markov process. So, if you do a second order Markov process, okay, let me see what I have Yes. The next step would be what if x. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
x1, x2, given x1, and x3, given x2. This is the process of Markov. If it's second order Markov, probability of a sequence of three data is p of, now we need these two, p of x1 joint x2 times p x3 given the previous state. Yes. But the previous state requires information of. Okay. This is what we call second order Markov. Markov chain. Okay. Just this rule. Okay. <coughs> so imagine now you repeat the same calculation that I give you above. This is exercise, simple exercise, and you try to compute the limit when it goes to infinity. But the logic will be the same. The logic will be I am here, but now it's a bit different. I have x1 given x, x1 comma x2, and then I will proceed sequentially. I will have here, the first item will be x2 given, okay, no, it will be x3 given x1 and x2. The next item will be x4 given x3 and x2. So I'm reading it all sequentially, so I'm not skipping any data. Eh? So I'm, I'm doing like a sliding window on the, on the trajectory. So if you do that, okay, this will be x3. If, if I want to add another one, x4, then I will have the next one x4 given x2 x3. This is the property that I will use. Okay? And I'm not going to repeat the calculation because if not, I will not reach the content I want to explain to you. Okay, this is x2, it's not very easy to read. So if you do this and then apply to the time reversal trajectory, you just change the order, the result that you obtain for p is what we call D3, which is nothing but big D3 minus big D2. Okay, so you have to evaluate, uh, okay, this is a small D2. Uh, big DM disappeared, okay? But one way of writing this is uh, the sum. Okay, you can do D3 and D2, which is one x 3 D, this is D3, one x 2 x3, log of b, uh, x1, x2, x3, b, x3, x2, x1, this is d3, and d2 is what you know, x1, comma, x2, b, x1, comma, x2, log b, x1, comma, x2, divided by b, x2, comma, x2. This is you simplify, this becomes the uh, sum x1, x2, x3, p, x1, x2, x3, this is the joint log of p, x3, given x1, comma, x2, divided by p, x1, given x3, x2. Okay, so this is a bit of a generalization. In the case of second order Markov, you have the average of this quantity, this one, okay? So it's not enough to have couples of states, so my, my current state and the next, but you need, at the end, three, because <coughs> the dynamics is run like this. So I, I have my previous two states and the next state. It's very, I mean, intuitive at the end, okay? For second order map. Okay, so I need information of triplets. Consecutive In Markov, I need information of double. My second order, triple. This thing. Makes sense. And you can generalize to k order Markov. In k order Markov process, you would have that d is equal to um, d of k plus 1. So k plus 1. Very simple. This is again the same calculation because we get it as as it. So this so puts me also, also. Please have a note. So you have also for stereoscopic, you have just uh 
Uh, is cost planning the executive? Yeah, again. It's the executive. So it's easy. Easy. Yeah, but, but now, first term, no, no. First term has two items. My first term is not PX1, it's PX1, X2. My first term, somehow here. Okay. Now I, I, cannot, I cannot begin breaking the bank like this. I, I cannot do this. This is not possible. Because look, look at the essential ingredient of, of, of second order Markov is this. You have to start from here. It's not.
it would be even worse. So it's much more difficult to sample them. So better you find a Markovian description and then you <laughs> do two or things uh, become quite tough. And actually it can... So if I think about it, so K is some kind of time scale in the process, right? So it means like it's saturated where your distributions are like not changing anymore. No, no, no. It's not about this. It's not about this because <laughs> like the large deviation. One thing is stationarity, and not to be stationary. That is relaxation time will be stationary state. And another thing is about the correlation of the process. You can have a, a stationary process which has very long correlations. <laughs> this K is more related to the correlations, intrinsic correlations of the process, even though you are in the stationary state. When you say saturating, it means like K does not change with K anymore. With K anymore, yes. In a Markov process, if you take strings of length 3 and you do the irreversibility, you don't have additional information with respect to strings of length 2, which is already all the information on the market process. You just need to know the previous state and go. And uh, do we know that what is that K prime or typically K where we see the saturation? Sorry? Or is it the point where we see the saturation? Like at K-tolerant, some K order? Yeah. So is this related to the shape of the potential? No, this is related to the, the dynamics. So if your process is k tolerant Markovian, it will saturate that k. But, but now I can, for an experimentalist, the challenge is to have sufficient statistics here. So the challenge is, OK, for d2, I need to know p of x1 and x2 for all values. But that's exactly how I was thinking. It's like you you uh, record a video of motor moving on a microtubule yeah. at like million frame rate, right? And yeah. start reducing that frame rate. Yeah, and there, there is a moment where I tell you, you better find the Markovian description because this you can build. In the end, if you have few states, you just need to count. You do like a matrix, no? <coughs> This is X1, this is X2, and as an experimentalist, you will count how many times you see X1, X2. Maybe you 30 here, and then 15 here, and so on. You do this counting. But now, look for a second to the formula. So imagine, in your experiment, you see x1, x2, but you don't see x2, x1. Mm -hmm. What is the log of 3 divided by 0? It's like you're missing that particular uh, information, right? You're missing. The rate is not sufficient enough to look at... So the log of 3 divided by 0 is the log of minus infinity, yeah. log of infinity, which is minus infinity. So that's why the curva diverges divergence is called divergence. Because, for example, it diverges. So it's, you have a zero denominator, it, it, it explodes. Okay? But fortunately, this is weighted by, by, by a very low probability. So, in essence, uh, when you have like, uh, some of x1, 4 minus 2, of p, x1, 4 minus 2, this is the sum of all possibilities x1, x2, log p, x1, x2, p, x2, x1. <coughs> you can also write this as, this is the sum over all possible x1, x2. You can also write this as the sums of x1 different to x2. And now you put p, x1, comma x2, minus p, x2, comma x1, OK, log of p, x1, comma, x2, p, x2, comma, x1. You can also write it like this. And now if you know this is a Markov process, a basic Markov process, you identify that this is the net current. This is the current. When you're a Markov process, it's not in the formulas, and all this will appear directly from this formula. Actually, this is not very far from what is not in the formula. This is uh, the current from uh, state x1 to state x2. This is one and another like one another. So this is D2. For a Markovian process, this will be the entropy production. For a non-Markovian, you do this. It's not the entropy production. It's the irreversibility. This is interesting to measure, but it's not enough. You see, 
you will, for entering into that, you will need to go further. Okay? So for a motor working on a, on a micro DB, so X1, X2 are attached or detached, or detached, attached, attached. Yeah. Those are X1, X2, right? Yeah. X1, X2 is the process. Okay. For the molecular motor model, let me yes. explain. This is here, to be Markovian, you need full information. So you need both the, uh, the position mm -hmm. and also the configuration, either attached or detached. So it's X eyes here is position and attached or detached for a motor. For any other process, imagine you have an enzyme and you, you have five states in the enzyme. There's nothing more than that. And there's a mark of dynamics with currents. There, the X eye will be the state of the enzyme. Uh -huh. so, so, so for example, here, since you have six states, why is it difficult to gather data for how many times each well, joint? It is difficult if, if the energy barriers are quite large because you will see down, but you will not see up. It depends on the energy barrier. If the energy barrier is KVT, you will see everything. You see everything. And in uh, biophysics, it will depend on the chemical tensor. If it's 100 KVTs, you will see the forward reaction and not the back reaction. Okay. Let, let me go into something quite nice, which is if it's Markovian, you have current times like this, and it's typically called affinity. Okay, so this is, if you do, uh, you put local little banners, this will be into the something, into the minor B. So there will be current times, this is called physically affinity or a conjugate force. Okay. You can't discuss this. Look at this. So the origin is. Okay, at this point, um, very important is to say the, the problem of insufficient statistics. <laughs> so you see that even though one of these will be zero. You can do this conveniently. So for example, this is x1 different to x2. So you select you, you select x1 and x2 in such a way that this is zero and this is not zero. So you will have here a log of a zero times something that is not zero. So in a way you can <laughs> like so, so in Spain when you take the, the pool, no? <laughs> so why are you saying one part is zero so it can happen that in your experiment you see the number of x1 and x2, for example, the number of 0, 1 is positive, let's say, I don't know, 50. Okay. <coughs> but the number of x2 and then x1 is equal to 0. You don't see the reverse. It could happen. This happens, you have a big problem because you are log of whatever number divided by zero. And log of one over zero is log of infinity. What to do? Okay. It's a big issue. Big issue. Maybe you sample infinite. So this is called this phenomenon is it means called having uh, insufficient statistics. <coughs> Something instead of zero, so that it makes sense. Sorry? Yeah, this is not something instead of zero, supposed to. Yeah. Actually, I started my PC thesis in this, and half of my PC thesis was to find the ways to, <laughs> to survive in this. And, uh, okay, I mean, how much time do we have? Five minutes? I, I recommend the next questions to ask to me right after, because otherwise, otherwise I will have to do the rest. There are two options, either I, I, I go a bit deeper in this, in the second lecture, and I give it details, and now I, I prepare the question, or I explain what I wanted to explain, which is also related to the experiment. It's an advanced version of this. I think you explain it, maybe people can ask you in that choice. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got questions, and actually, um, so you see, you can arrange this in different ways. You can do log of zero over something or log of something over zero. If you combine ways to put log of zero over something, so this is log of zero. Still, log of zero is infinity. So one way, one way you can do is to do okay. This, the, the D two is this thing. This will be greater or equal than doing this sum sum star, and the sum star would be I will only sum. Those reversible. But in that case, we change the notion of reversal. Forward process, backward process. No. 
no, 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 because you can have protect, you can have transitions that you see, you may, maybe you see this forward and backward, but the problem is that you don't see this path. If you do this, you stop all, only over transitions that are ups, uh, reversible, the distance reversible both happen, <coughs> you get a lower bound. And uh, I can show you, okay. the best thing I can do is to show you um, what happens in, uh, okay, what do we have to connect this? Do we have to connect it to? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to show you what happens in a simulation when you do that. There's something very different. Yes, that's it. If you do this, actually you get an underestimation of the end result. This will come out in a moment. No, sorry, which one? This one. computer. 
and if I do sequences of D2, D3, D4, the maximum I can get is P9. And even if I do infinite, uh, if, if I do an extrapolation to, any infin to K infinity, that extrapolation, which I, I, I call D infinity here, okay? uh, this is the one in, in pink, okay? D infinity. So I have a, a technique to extrapolate this from here to reach the plateau. Even if you do that, you reach this value here. So it seems that there is a, there is a total, uh, that there is an unavoidable uh, loss of information. When you do this, you are not able to capture the total entry flash. <coughs> this happens quite a lot because you are missing information about the jump. Okay. It's really, even if you are a best statistician and you can have um, the, the infinite information of, of that trajectory, the lower bound that I put at the beginning of, of the lecture can be a lower bound that is unavoidable. Okay, so some cosmetic procedures uh, do not give you the entry to that, it gives you something below. And this is why what this central <coughs> message that I wanted to highlight. You cannot call this irreversibility entry to that. You see it here. Even with infinitely long trajectories, <coughs> you don't get the entry to that. So the mathematical object defined like this is not in general entry to that. That's the central so This happens because we neglect the switch. Like you don't see the switch. You don't see the switch. <coughs> uh, and one second. The, the strongest effect you see at the stall force. Because you could you could do the same model, but now at, at the force. So you could have, uh, for instance, I uh, have it here. So you can you can have the same model, but now add an external force. So my model has a current towards the left. If I have an external force, there will be a value at which, okay, the effective dynamics will be like a tilt. So I switch, but I have a tilt. So there will be a value of this force that will compensate totally the, the, the vertical current. And, and this is what we call stall here, okay? The stall force. At stall force, this is the most complicated, challenging case, because if you only see x, x is not moving on average. So in that case, D2 is zero, okay? This is the, the worst scenario you can find. In stall force, <coughs> so this is here. At stall force, D2, okay, this is D2. The problem <coughs> is, okay, you get 10 minus six, but they have a trajectory that is 10 to the six. So, so it's, it's just, uh, it's, this is a, a numerical zero, if you do, the calculation analytically of the reflux or of, of D2 is zero. This is equal, this is a zero, okay? Despite the recent reproduction, so the entry reproduction is here, is 10 to the minus one, the entry reproduction. This is sigma top. And this is the most problematic, possible most problematic case. You will say, okay, let me say this, Marco. I have a process that has no current, current is zero. Then this, this statistic will give you zero. Even though there are currents, because at the end here you are switching on and off. So imagine if you have a dynamics like this, so I have a cycle doing like this. This is really the most striking case. You have a cycle. If you do this cycle, you are putting work, and then you receive less work than what you put in this type of cycles. This is clearly reversed the cycle. But if you look at these two states, I will see it jump forward, forward, forward. So I see no, no current. I see a clear dynamics. So this is really so here is the uh, biggest challenge. The, 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 the difference between this V2 and the sigma top. That it's enormous. It's a ma maximum. Yeah, yeah, it's enormous. But luckily, and, and this was one of the, I think the central findings in this paper, is that even though you have no current, so the current is zero at this value. Even though you have zero current, at this point, the current is equal to zero. The velocity of the motor is zero. There is no current. There is zero current at this point. Even though in X there's no current, there is the presence of stall force. Yeah, at stall force, there's no, you don't see current if you only see X. 
And then you see the ATP. Okay, then the problem is solved. There's no current. And there, it's still the dissipation because you are spending ATP. Okay. It's zero. But in this situation, what we found a very simple <coughs> trick to capture irreversibility is to do D3. This here is D3, and it's a big difference from D2. And it's positive. So you only need, so the simplest way to detect irreversibility is to look at three times of laser. Three times statistics will tell you already the system is out of the D3, you see the number, D3 is 10 to the minus 2. Of course, you are orders of magnitude far from total energy. Okay, is that you cannot do much, but at least you can, with this simple statistic, you can conclude safely that your dynamics is non-equilibrium, even though it has no current. Okay, and this okay now, now I come to what you say. And this brings me a bit of the discussion related to this uncertainty relation that, that they are very popular now. Uncertainty relations require a current, so you estimate the reduction for a system that has current. You take the variance of the current divided by the mean of the current. But here, the, the mean of the current is zero. In this situation, there is a big challenge for the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. When I have a here it tells you. No current, but still in equilibrium. I still in equilibrium. So the thermodynamic uncertainty relation here tells you this is equilibrium. So it's a popular result, it's very useful, but, but it's very powerful in systems that have current. Yeah, is it like only happening in relative stall? This phenomenon? Stall only? No, okay, you see it here at different values of the force. That stall is, is striking, yeah. the effect is striking. But see, uh, there is another, uh, like, you uh, have these batches, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, in, so, it is flashing. Right. Now, if I put this uh, special asymmetry, it is there, right? But if I say now my two the peaks are like symmetric, but it flashes. Huh? Then also you don't have current. Yeah, but it's, it's out of the same situation. Same situation. Same situation here. Yeah. You need three number of Perhaps Not zero. No, no, it's not zero. This is a log scale. It's all, all all these numbers are positive. There's no zero here. Flat, okay, it's flat because it's a long scale. It's a long scale. Okay. <laughs> we, are, we are from 10 minus 10 to 10 to the zero. It's flat. Uh, we are comparing orders of magnitude. It's not flat. So in reality, it will look something like this, quadratic. This is linear scale, this is log scale. So it's, it's a big difference. So, uh, I'm happy to. Uh, huh. So, so we can just one question. Just trying to understand what you have done. So in your simulation, you are only changing the degree of Markovian uh, feature of your whatever simulation, right? Not, not at all. Not at so, all. So when you say D2, that is like second order Markovian? No, no, no. Very, very important. This question can clarify a lot of things. The dynamics is what it is. It's, it's the flashing ratchet potential Markovian. And then I cross grain. Yeah, you are over grain. Yeah. Then the sequence, the course sequence, is a hidden mark of process. Okay. So, so my question is that, like the way I have understood this, uh -huh. your D two should have been much closer to sigma total. Yes, it is when you have full information. When, in this case, D two, it is. This is an example with full information. Here, I'm, I'm using full information, meaning that x i has six possible values. Here, x i can be zero, one, or zero prime, one prime. Okay. Sigma total is like D1. Right? Sigma total is D2. Yeah. Sigma total <coughs> equals D2. Oh, that is D2. D2. D1 is 0. D1 is 0. I told you before. Okay? This is with full information. A complete Markovian process is like D1, right? No, no, D2. This is what I explained. D2. Markovian, okay. you start with a D2. That was the beginning. D2 is one job. Oh, so it's this K plus 1. D1 is IAD. D1 is IAD. Yeah. And it's zero. Okay. When you have partial information, you are below. This is with partial information. All these bits are below. But I'm not changing the dynamics. So I'm, the x partial is a hidden mass of process. I don't know the degree of mass of energy. 
the different this is not changing the dynamics, it's changing the way I analyze the data. Okay. So, so the way I see I can count down. The different the ends is different so, ways of analyzing data. It's like it's like you are you are just throwing away some some frames from the simulation. Yes. So say you have ten lakhs. One the the DK and, means I do statistics of one by k of total number of frames. Yes. Yes. So I expect k frames. So the, the k here is the number of frames. Oh, I see. The number Not, of consecutive frames oh, that I that I process. You okay. see here, two frames means jumps. And three frames means three. So, okay. so which means your D2 has? D2 is two frames, two consecutive frames. So lunch is downstairs, by the way. Okay, I think I have to stop. Thank you. <laughs>